What would it mean for your silver, your gold, if the European Union went to a gold standard? You remember backing our money with actual physical metal. What do you think that would do to the price of precious metals? Do we have some evidence? Do we have some clues, some crumbs we can pick up along the way that maybe indicate to us that that could be the case? Or at least one or many of the European Union countries are preparing themselves, positioning themselves for that possibility. We're going to talk about that in this video. We also want to talk about the big picture of what's going on in the silver and gold market. The dollar's going down. Bond rates are going down. There's a lot of big factors at play that can be coming together. What do you think is going to happen if we get just a little good luck, a little confluence of good factors that could propel the price of silver and gold higher? I'm going to talk about a couple critical things that are changing right now that can give us reason for great optimism. And we deserve that, right? We've been through the mill as precious metals investors. The last official three years have been very, very difficult. Look, the gold price is actually holding up pretty well, but silver investors have been buffeted around. We're hearing from a lot of the retail coin shops, people are actually giving up on silver. Could that be a good sign for what's to come? That's officially considered capitulation, when people give up. It's usually measured more in the stock market, but could that be going on right now in the precious metals market on the retail investment side as well? I've got a fascinating visual that I'm going to show you later as well about just how much gold and silver have been mined in the history of the world relative to other metals. But let's dig right into what, the, what this Dutch central banker had to say. There was a recent interview with one of the one of the Dutch central bankers. His name is Artert, Artert Huben, okay? He's the director of financial markets for the DNB. Now, you may be asking, what's the DNB, Ron? Well, that's the Dutch National Bank. That's the Dutch equivalent of the United States Federal Reserve, where our old friend Gomer Pyle, not Gomer Pyle, Jerome Powell works. But the Dutch central banker had some very interesting things to say about his viewpoint on gold in particular. And when he talks about gold, you know he's talking about silver. Could we be heading? Are they preparing for a potential gold standard in the future? Guys, we got to remember, and let's do a quick history because that's what this article starts out with. We were on the gold standard until 1971. The Dutch central banker says, right after World War II, we had the Bretton Woods Agreement. That was when the United States basically told the world, hey, the dollar is king. And all the other world currencies, like 40 other world currencies, were pegged to the dollar. That meant that it was a, a fixed exchange rate to the dollar. But the United States said, don't worry, guys, because the dollar is backed by gold. The dollar is good as gold. And that worked great, right? Up until about 1971, countries like France, countries like Holland did very, very well. They had trade surpluses, and they were able to accumulate large amounts of gold. But then suddenly, and now I'll start reading to you from this article, we're going to analyze this because this... Dutch central banker has some fascinating things to say that can spark some real optimism for anyone who's an enthusiast, and I know that's you, for the precious metals. Before I do that, I want to remind you, big giveaway this Friday, Black Friday, the big Black Friday giveaway. Let me pull out the box and show you what you can win this Friday, okay, quickly. Where's the box? Here's the box. <laughs> I lost the box. I lost the giveaway. Just kidding. I've got it all in here. It's all here. Look, look, let's start with the biggie. We've got a 10 ounce bar from our friends at Pimbex, P I M B E X, Pimbex.com. It's right there. Go check them out. Online bullion dealer. A 10 ounce Engelhart bar. You can win this on Friday, okay? But you need to enter the giveaway. We've got some gold backs. From our friend Adam Van, Goldbacks. And 
from our friend Jim M, Coin Shop Chris, and a number of other. All this silver, there's everything in here. One ounce coins, all kinds of crazy stuff. All that can be yours. Go to the link in the description of this video or any of my videos. Don't go now. I want you to stay with me now. But there's a short little two minute video. I'll go through everything that's in the giveaway in detail. But you can, all you have to do is leave a comment on that video. I tell you exactly what you have to say to be entered into the giveaway. Now let's get back to this Dutch. What did this Dutch central banker say about gold that we found so interesting? Uh, he says here, uh, as, a, as a result, <clears throat> our gold reserves increased or we got more dollars that we converted into gold. We kept asking the Americans, can you convert our dollars into gold? This was like in the 1960s, right? Leading up to when Nixon took us off the gold standard. Americans made losses from their trade relationships. Eventually, it was unsustainable for them to lose more and more of their gold reserves. And finally, in 1971, your, likely if you're joining me from the United States, your president, Nixon, announced America's departure from Bretton Woods. But by then, the, the Dutch had over 1,700 tons of gold. He says, yes, we did very well. Nixon temporarily took the United States, temporarily, although it's lasted almost 50 years now, right, guys? <laughs> took us off the gold standard. And we know what a wise decision that was for President Nixon to take the United States off the gold standard, right? The dollar has done so well now that it's just based on nothing. You know, Nixon pressed the button and turned the dollar into unicorn fart dust. And look how great, you know, look how great the, the, the tech stocks have done. Look how, how the dollar has maintained so much of its value. Prices have gone down, right? The middle class is flourishing in the United States. What a great idea, President Nixon. We really appreciate you abandoning what the founding fathers of the United States of America put into the United States Constitution because they were afraid of the evils or the downfalls of central banking. I digress. This is where it gets very interesting. The narrator asks the question, since the 1970s, gold had no role in the monetary system, but we and other countries had substantial reserves. And the Dutch central banker says this. He says, the beauty of gold. I wonder what he finds beautiful about gold. And silver is that it's stable in value. It retains value. That's one of the reasons why central banks hold gold. If you thought about this, central banks around the world, they're not buying dollars. They're not buying Bitcoin. They're not buying anything right now. What are they buying? They're buying gold. And when we say gold, we're talking about silver as well. He says, <clears throat> gold has an intrinsic value, unlike a dollar or any other currency, let alone Bitcoin. <laughs> he actually said that. Wow. Gold has a value on its own. It's fungible product, meaning it can be separated. I'm pretty sure that's what fungible means. I could be wrong. Correct me in the, does fungible mean it can be divided easily? Say yes or no in the comments. Otherwise, I'm going to feel like a real, more of a heel than I feel like a lot of the times. He says it's a liquid product. You can buy and sell it almost anywhere in the world. This is the Dutch central banker, guys. So it's really an outstanding commodity to base an exchange exchange rate system, quote, parentheses, gold standard on. Did you hear what this guy just said? Huh? That's music to our ears. This is not, not some gold or silver enthusiast in his basement in Cincinnati or St. Louis or, or uh, Texas or uh, uh, Tampa or uh, uh, Quebec or, or Mexico City. This is the Dutch central banker. Okay. Um, darn it. I need to look at the things. Does fungible, what does fungible mean? <laughs> Somebody help me. I think it means it's, it's dividable. Hold on. Let me, let me pop out the chat here. Fungible, fungible, Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a reason. God bless, God bless you, Goya. Okay. Let's get back to this. Let's get back to this. Okay, but then the, 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 the central bankers asked this question, yet we sold quite a bit of our gold. Why? 
He said, there are a number of things that make gold very attractive to central banks. Gold is like, is like solidified confidence. Wow, listen to this. Gold is like solidified confidence for the central bank. It's something that has historically fulfilled that role. If we ever unexpectedly have to create a new currency or a systematic risk arises, right, crisis, like maybe the dollar blows up. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but could the public can have confidence in the Dutch National Bank because whatever money we issue, we can back it with the same value in gold. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, let's, let's move on. Uh, the Dutch hold the seventh most gold in the world. Uh, he says, yes, in terms of our GDP, this is where it gets interesting, more interesting. We're in a fine position. So then they ask the banker, so how do you determine what is an appropriate amount of gold to hold? Because that $35 billion, that doesn't quite relate to our GDP, does it? Thank you, Craig, for the super chat. Thank you. And I think I got another one before the it started. Thank you also for the super chat. Super appreciated, guys. Okay. So he's asking, do we hold enough gold? Okay. Uh, and Hubin says, the, the Dutch central banker says, we have about 4% of our GDP in gold reserves. This is the key. And this is a big deal. And that's comparable to France, Germany, and Italy. Those are the biggest economies in the EU. And they all hold about 4% of their GDP in gold. They hold proportionate amounts of gold to their relative GDPs. And I, we, I, we've, we've heard this before. I haven't talked about this for months and months. But it's been brought up several times before. Why do they all hold about 4% of their GDP in gold? Because they know that if the, uh, if the going gets tough, right? There's other ways to say that, but if the, uh, if the, if the turds start flying, however, you, that was probably bad to say, but you know what I'm saying. If things get bad, that they can back their currency with gold. Uh, he said, I think it's, he, they asked him, well, is that the rule of thumb? And the Dutch central banker says, I think to be very honest, there is no optimum. So you can't determine objectively what is the optimal level, optimal level of gold reserves, just like with insurance insurance because you don't know when and to what extent a fire is going to occur and so on of course it also has to do with the shocks of the future with all kinds of uncertain factors i think it's just that we as dutch people want to be a little careful we think it's good to have a certain basis of sol solvency at the central bank invested in gold they then, they then ask him, because you could also say, if it's a kind of insurance, for example, if the financial system collapses or whatever, shouldn't you have a lot more? And he says to that, remember, guys, central banks, it's not just the Dutch, okay? It's, it's not just the French. It's not just the, it's not just the Chinese. Central banks around the world aren't buying treasury bonds, aren't buying U.S. dollars, okay? They're buying gold. We can't emphasize this enough. And they're buying more gold right now than they bought back when the Bretton Woods was in place and they were on the gold standard. It's absolutely crazy, okay? Again, they asked him, shouldn't you have a lot more gold? And the Dutch central banker said, you could think that. I think it's more than enough because if everything collapses, <laughs> I can't believe this guy's saying this, then the value of those gold reserves shoots up. It skyrockets. Okay? Look, I get beat up all the time for saying gold and silver could skyrocket. You probably do too amongst your, your mainstream friends. This is the Dutch central banker, right? There's there's us, right? There's the financial media. There's a, the the ba central bankers are way up here. He's talking about the value potentially skyrocketing. Look, I need to do something very important right now. You guys have supported me through the last one year and 10 months. Thank you very much. One little thing you do that really helps is give this video thumbs up. You've given it over 100 thumbs up. You get 10 rings of the bell for that.
Thank you very much. This is a Dutch central banker talking about the value of gold and you know what that's going to do for silver? We talk about. I'm telling you. Do you believe? Let me ask in the chat. I want to ask you a question, right? Whoa, look at all these people here. Hello, Annie Oakley. Hello, Coin Shop Chris. Do you believe? Do you believe that by Christmas, we're going to have a new all-time high in gold? I believe we will. Okay, I'd say it's a 62.4% chance that we will. But you put, what percent chance do you think? Somewhere between zero and 100. I say 62.4. I want to see what you guys think. Am I full of it? Am I crazy? I just believe we're going to get that new all-time high. Steph Fram, 100. Ricky Sasa, crap. It says 80, 80, 78.8. Sassy Silver goes with 100. Woo-wee. I can feel it. One of the reasons why I say that is guys, the last three, four, five weeks, gold shot up and it has built a solid base right at a point where it's within spitting distance of a new all time high. Okay, we're talking 5% more. I mean, Bitcoin moves that much in an afternoon a lot of days. Okay, 31, 70, 95. Thank you guys for participating. Thank you for being here. Okay, don't forget, go to www.ronsbasement.com and register. We're incubating. You can be one of the first dwellers there. Right? We've got a chat room that we're building and it's going really well. So please, if you get a chance, check that out and thank dot com Don for all of his hard work on the website. Let me get back to this. We're not we're almost done with the Dutch central banker. Whew. <laughs> wow. Secondly, okay, he just said that silver and gold, well, he said gold, but we're going to throw silver in there with it, right? Because silver always follows gold, and it follows it in a more exaggerated way. Secondly, you don't have to fully cover it. That's what experience shows. Full coverage is only necessary in a country where there are no other mechanisms to support confidence in the central banks. What he's saying is... You can tether, you can have a gold-backed currency. Maybe you say the, the currency is based 20% with gold. Every dollar you know, or, 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 or euro or whatever is backed 20% by gold. But it's tethered. It's Think of it like this. Think of it like, like the currency is like a ship floating around, and the tether is the anchor, right? It can float around, but the base, the foundation, uh, the anchor, right, is gold. Right? Gold, gold, gold. Very, very interesting. Let's just, <laughs> he says it right here, right? He, he's talking about uh, uh, protecting the Dutch people, protecting, there's two big key takeaways from this. Number one, protecting the Dutch people, the value, the historic value of gold and silver for that matter. Okay. And he's talking about how you don't have to have a ton of it. It's like insurance, like he says. All right, and it when it when it comes into play, it doesn't just pay off; it pays off very, very big. Do you think? I'm curious. Okay, I'm going to ask one more question today. Do you think that within the next let's let I mean three years? Does three years seem that far out? Three years? It was three years ago, right now, that we started this horrific market for silver and gold that we've endured, basement dwellers. We've made it through. Think out three years from now into the future. Do you think that we are going to be facing a much tougher economic environment? When I say tougher, I mean the hens come home to roost, that all this debt that our government, thank you, Tara. Wow. Big super chat, all the super chats, super appreciated. But when you look out three years, do you, I mean, three years, when I look out, I don't want to be a pessimist. I don't want to be a cynical, okay? But when I look at what's going on right now, and I look out three years from right now, I see what this Dutch central banker is talking about, that a lot of this could come to fruition. That people that hold silver and gold could be very grateful they have it because it will act like an insurance policy. Do you think that we've got some doom coming down the pipeline? And I'm not going to go, this is not going to be a doom video. It's, it's, we're not going to go completely into the doom. But I feel like when I look at what's gone on in the world on many different, let's, let's just go through it. Think about your life, your household. It's much harder to live, okay? It is. 
unless you've had some windfall, gotten a big promotion at work, won the lottery, whatever, if you're average Western person, it's it has, hasn't it become much harder to live, right? Then think about the city that you live in overall, much harder. Think about the United States in general. Very difficult situation the country finds itself in. Financially, okay, fiscally, our government is in deep trouble. Won't go down that rabbit hole, but you know, right? 33, 34, who knows? Maybe it's 35 trillion in debt. That alone, but then politically, right? Americans don't get along like no other time in history. So we're zooming out. We started with you and your house, city, country. Then think about the world. The war, We have two wars going on right now, right? And it's, it's, a, it's up for debate how involved the United States is. But we also know the world is splitting, bifurcating. The world is bifurcating. All right, you got the West, which is in deep financial trouble, almost all the Western countries, Japan, Europe, right? And you got the East, the countries that are that are starting the BRICS, the BRICS Plus. Don't forget, we have six new countries joining the BRICS in like what, six weeks? The BRICS in six? Six weeks? Six new countries? See if I can remember them. Iran, United Arab Emirates, Egypt, uh, Argentina, Ethiopia, and there's one more that I forgot. Please forgive me, right? I'm the worst YouTube content creator on the face of the earth, right? Anyway, there's six new countries joining Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. The world, that's the big picture, right? That's the big, big picture that we're dealing with right now. And it's an interesting time. So do you think that in the next three years, three years, that's not that long. Okay, that we're going to be facing some very hard times. If you do, type hard. I'll type it hard. I'll type hard times. I'll type you are the best. And I'll stop typing. Oh, you're the beset. You're the beset. <laughs> I like communicating with you guys via typing. It's kind of fun. We'll have to do a little more of that. Anyway, that's the big picture in that regard. But what else is going on in the big picture? Because we have some interesting developments. I'm having technical problems. Can you guys still hear me and see me? If you can, give me a five by five. That would be very helpful. Hello? Uh-oh. Extremely. Okay, that's coming through hard. Five by five. Thank you, Snakebite. I'm telling you, someday, guys, you're going to get to meet Snakebite in person because he doesn't live too far from me. I'm going to get him here in the basement. Big picture. Okay. Oh, have you thought about this, silver and gold investors? This will bring a little cockles to your heart. Okay. Warm the cockles. Isn't that a saying? I hope I didn't say anything bad there. Anyway, don't forget, as we're dealing with almost all-time highs for the silver and gold price in St. Louis, and yes, it's going to be a Merry Christmas. I told you, 62.3% chance. We're going to have all-time highs in gold. And you know silver is going to zoom, zoom, huh? Like Santa on his sleigh. Remember, remember, this is serious. Around the world, gold is reaching all-time highs in almost every other currency, okay? Euros, can't Canada, uh, China, everywhere, right? And I, just generally speaking, gold is at all-time highs all throughout the world, okay? What is that? telling us I ain't telling us nothing about silver but remember silver always moves later number one this is the one and two we all have to remember now basement dwellers silver moves later and number two more extreme and you don't even want to see what's going to happen to the mining stocks I'm not giving financial advice but <laughs> when they move they really move. I've been at this for 20 years, okay? And I've been beat to a pulp with mining stocks over the last two or three years, right? We're still standing. I'm still strong. You're still strong. But I'm telling you, those mining stocks can really, really move, okay? Uh, I got this. We, we have a fellow basement dweller. Everybody say, get well soon, Mark, okay? He'll know what we're talking about. He's a fellow basement dweller who's in a state of recovery right now and a regular contributor to this channel. <laughs> he sent me something interesting. I want to read you about China, China and silver and China's central bank. What we're talking about, we don't usually talk about central banks so much, but nonetheless, Let's let's just talk this real quick. This was from 
FX Empire. Headline, <coughs> and there's not, this, this, is, this is short and powerful. Okay, central bank demand influencing silver's bullish trend. Hmm, interesting. Is that supposed to say gold? Isn't it always the central banks are buying gold, 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 which is fine. We're happy about that. We're not complaining. <sighs> Hope you didn't hear me slurp. This says central banks are buying silver. Very interesting. Shall we examine a little bit? <coughs> central banks, notably China, the world's second largest economy and growing with a growing middle class, 1.4 billion people, China alone, like what? Excuse me, four times the population of the United States? Huh? I hope I don't disintegrate on you here on camera. Nonetheless, Central banks, notably China, continue to increase their silver reserves, providing a steady demand for the metal. This trend, along with the recent economic data from the United States they're talking about, our unemployment situ our employment situation not looking so good, inflation supposedly dropping, okay, right. real estate situation, more, all that. <coughs> This trend, along with the recent economic data, points towards a market that is increasingly bullish on silver. Investors remain cautiously optimistic with expectations of a dovish turn in Fed policy amidst subsiding inflation. Now, what's so interesting about China and silver? And I need to do some more digging on this, but, excuse me, there's also been a, a recent report that says the Chinese government is now encouraging their citizenry to buy silver. I'll just go ahead and read you briefly what I know about that. But, well, basically, the Chinese government has come out with some new silver investment products. I think one was like a 500-gram bar, a kilogram bar. Uh, I'm doing some more digging on it. But the Chinese state media... OK, like in America, you turn on Fox or CNN and you get all these washed up uh, um, uh, TV personalities trying to tell you to convert all your money into silver and gold. I'm not putting anybody down in those companies. But look, if you want to buy silver or gold, I recommend you buy it for the best price. I would recommend that if you're going to deal with one of those TV commercial companies that you investigate thoroughly take your time and make sure you're getting a fair price. I think Pembex for me is a great solution because they always have the best price. And if I'm going to buy silver, I want to get quality. I trust Pembex. Okay. And I want to get as much silver as I can get the best value I can get for my dollar. I want quality at the best price. Nonetheless, in China, the state media is now advertising the benefits of, of, of investing in silver to the Chinese citizenry. Very, very interesting, okay? You know, when we're on the subject of silver, this could become a big story, and I think that I'm one of the first to be talking about it. I believe Bix Weir was the first person I heard talking about it, um, and I love Bix Weir, and I love the content that he puts out and the quality, but I did some digging on my own as well. This big COP28 conference in Dubai in a few weeks, likely what we're going to hear is like a new version of the Paris Accords. The Paris Accords came out of COP21. That's when the world's powers, I mean, this is like a group of the world's biggest, most powerful countries said, we got to deal with climate change. We can only have one and a half degree average increase based upon the industrial revolution, the average temperature back then between 1850 and 1900. And we need to do wah, 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 wah. They're going to do it again. And they're going to raise more cane. And what we're hearing, and this is coming from official sources, is that they're going to propose that the world's power elite agree that by the year 2030, they triple the amount of installed green energy capacity. Most of that will be solar, okay? Look, wind turbines use a lot of silver as well. But if we get a tripling of the world's installed base of solar where we're at right now, guys, the demand already this year, solar alone is sucking up 160 million ounces 
of silver. That's huge. And some people think that the final number this year could be as high as 200 million ounces. Remember, remember last year when our friends in India, we're not, we're not real happy with our friends in India right now. We're just joking. We love India. But our friends in India last year, they imported 300 million ounces of silver. That was big news. Oh my God. All the, all the, all those pumper uh, silver channels on YouTube were talking about us. Ew, India brought, brought, India imported 30% of the world's silver. Oh my God. It's a big deal. Blah, blah, blah. Well, 200 million or 100, the solar alone. This year, you know, in the next couple, of, this year is going to bring in, you know, half or two thirds of, of that amount of silver. And as we move in, and, it, and that on its own is growing, but if we get this COP28 thing that goes through, it could be absolutely crazy for demand. That's industrial. And then I want you to think about this. This is the big picture. This is what we get excited about. It's awesome that everybody in the West is selling their silver. All right? It's all over the place. It's just the reality, right? People are, people are giving up. They're capitulating. They're having silver diarrhea. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. People are giving up. That's a good thing. That's a sign that the market is about to turn. And listen, Rick Rule said this, and I think it's brilliant. Silver doesn't have to be loved to do well. It just needs to be a little bit less hated because silver is hated. I can't believe we're going to get to 200 thumbs up, guys. Thank you. Don't forget, press the thumbs up. We got 350 people. Let's get it up to 400. Let's do it, baby. Okay? Okay? Silver just hasn't, silver doesn't have to be loved. It just has to be a little less hated. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, my friend Craig Edmonds, for the super chat. Super generous. We love you, too. Just a little less hated, right? It has to go from, from, uh, from, from you know, uh, <laughs> I keep thinking of a story I don't want to tell. So, uh, you know, like, 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 some, like, there's been times in my life when certain people maybe weren't too fond of me, okay? I'm 53 years old. Let's say when I was in my 20s, 30s, okay? Maybe maybe some in-laws, right? And they didn't like me too well. And I changed my ways. And I went from being not so well-liked to being less hated. And it was a good step in the right direction. That's all we need for the price of silver, okay? All right, anyway, I better, I better get off that subject right away. Um, and that COP28 can be a big deal, but what's even a bigger deal, thank you, Frank. Man, you guys are, you guys are giving it to me. There's even more, Frank. Now you got me pumped up with that super chat. There's even more. What we're talking about, the C word. You know what the C word is, basement dwellers? Who knows what the C word is? And it's not anything that has to do with any type of body part. If you do that, you will get timed out on the channel. Okay? Who can tell me what the C word is? Who's been paying attention, basement dwellers? Because this is where it gets exciting. Okay? Who can? Who knows? I'm watching. I'm watching. Oh dear God! <laughs> it's not. It's it's a it's an economic or it's a term that has to do with nothing to do with about. Nope. Good try. Original intent. Good try. Contango currency. Nope. Nope. Um, I'll get. <laughs> got silver. That's a funny one. Horrible spelling. Yeah. Let me. I'll give you a hint. Rivers sometimes do it. Nope, not not crypto, not contraction, not Crimex, not CPI. Confluence, Bruce, Tampa. Guys, this is where it gets exciting. If we have a confluence of factors that are actually supportive for the silver price and gold price, a confluence of factors. What could another confluence be? What could what little streams come together and they become very powerful rivers? And that could be the silver price because we've been fighting against a lot of headwinds. You know that whole story. But the Fed being done. Let's talk about our friend Gomer Pyle. I keep calling him Gomer Pyle, not Gomer Pyle. Not going, what's his name? The guy that runs the Federal Reserve. Not it's not Gomer Pyle, right? That's Sergeant Carter. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Oh no, it's not Gomer Pyle. It's Jerome Powell. Jerome Powell's done raising rates. Surprise, 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 right? Now everybody's saying it. Everybody is saying it. Uh-oh, my number of people on the thing just went away. Okay, there you go. You're back. We got 200 thumbs up. Let me finish on this and I'll ring the cowbell and I'm going to ring it loud. Okay, but 
Everybody's saying that Jerome Powell, we're done. So congratulations, right? I think we're done. Now they could try to raise quarter point again. Whatever they're doing now, if they do raise any more, is just in nominal terms. It's not real, okay? They've shot their real ammunition. They've used all their good missiles is another way to think about it. So we've got a potential confluence of factors coming together that will be very supportive for silver. And there's even more, guys. Man, this is great. This is great. I'm so glad you came and joined me this morning because there's even more to be excited about, okay? And this came from our friend Rick Rule. Again, Rick Rule, I call him, he's like the crown prince of precious metals. He's smart, brilliant mind, I heard somebody describe him as. Think about this. I want you to think about this. All these good things coming together, that whole list we just talked about. But the cherry on top, and I mean a big, nice cherry on top of it all, is manipulation. Everybody that's invested in precious metals, everybody says, oh, the price of the Crimex, right? Somebody type that in, and I agree. It's absolute. The price of gold and silver, it's been proven. It's a cottage industry, right? Oh, wow. Whoa. Silver State, man, thank you for that super chat. Man, you guys are out of, super blowing me away. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Silver State. The cherry on top is, and Rick Rule said this, and it, it, was, a, it was like a mental explosion for me because I'd never thought about this. And that's why we learn from each other. You guys, please leave comments, interact, be nice. And you guys are nice, right? All right? The moderators do a great job of weeding out the few, and I mean very few people that aren't nice. So, But that's how we learn is from each other. Rick Rule said this, okay? All this confluence of factors. The price of silver is manipulated. The price of gold is manipulated. But think about this. Nobody's ever really that I've heard brought this up. Over the last 50 years, it was easy it was easier for the manipulators to manipulate the price down, okay? Because of macro factors, a strong dollar, a strong, the United States ruled the world, right? Those manipulators, okay, they don't care. What they care about is making money, number one, right? They're greedy, right? Okay, they don't care if the price goes up or down, they likely manipulated it down over generally over the last 50 years because that was the easiest direction to manipulate it in. Now, because of all those factors, this confluence that we talked about, as we move into now this new era for silver and gold, it's going to be easier for them to manip 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 manipulate the price up. Okay, so we could be watching the price of silver. That's when we see, remember silver, $50, remember all that. I got to ring the bell. Hold on. I'm sorry. I apologize. Here you go. Hold your ears if you don't like bells. Three, two, one. This came from Joe F., right? A regular... Subscriber, member of Ron's Basement. We got 400 people here on a Sunday morning. You guys are awesome. Thank you for the super chats. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Let's talk about it. You want to see something crazy? I'm going to pull up a chart. Okay. Well, no, a visual. I like pictures. Okay. I like pictures. All right. Hold on. Okay. This, And then we got another bomb I got to drop on you guys. I'm sorry. It's just one of those mornings. We are on a roll, baby. Don't forget to go to www.ronsbasement.com when you find yourself with a little spare time later today. Let's look at something super interesting. If I can get the technology to work here, we'll just do it this way. <laughs> here we go. All the metals. Oh, here we go. This is all the metals that were mined in 2022, okay? All the metals in the world in 2022 that were mined. So up there, that big one at the top, that is iron ore, goes through all these different metals, some of which I've never heard of. Copper, there's copper. Look how small copper. Copper is that little red one. That's copper, okay? Now, let's go down here to precious metals. Okay, look at how tiny silver is. 
That's silver right there. 26,000 tons, I guess that is. Hold on here. 26, do you see silver? It's right there. You see it? Yeah, do you see silver right in the middle of your screen? Silver, 26,000 tons. I, there's something big about this that I want to... Here's gold. See tiny little gold? 3,000 tons. Silver and gold are precious. They are rare, okay? Trust me, because people are greedy. They would have dug up all that they could. Now, remember, okay, I'm going to show you this picture again. <laughs> this is crazy. Gold is that little tiny dot over there. Silver is one of those little tiny dots. Those are all the other metals, okay? That's how precious silver and gold are. Now, and I forget who shared that. Maybe Mark, our friend Mark, who's always helping out with the channel. Thank you, Mark. Um, here's what I want to point out. I want you to think about what does that mean that the amount of gold, the amount of silver is that small, okay? Because people are always, when we talk about silver going to 100, right? Keith Newmeyer can say it, right? Triple digit silver, right? He can say it. But if we say it, we kind of get attacked on a regular basis. What is, what is this? This is, this, I want to get your thoughts on this. The silver market in particular is so small. Do they, we all, there's always this, oh, it's manipulated. There's powers. They want to keep the price down. It's so small, right? Like what, 20 billion, $23 billion worth of silver were produced last year. Do they really care if the, if the, if the annual silver market, excuse me, goes to a trillion? I mean, our government has 34 trillion in debt. The, the, the market cap of Apple or Microsoft is well north of a trillion. I meant to look it up before I came on, but I don't know the numbers. Home Depot, okay? Uh, Robbie, uh, uh, Tavi Costa put out a very cool tweet just the other day that, like, the value of Apple and Microsoft weighting, the value on the S&P 500, Apple and Microsoft combined is, like, or, or separately, I think, are, like, 70 times more than the entire mining industry are you kidding me so when i hear here's here's what i want to ask you when we hear that oh they won't let silver go up in value they won't let it's blah 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 i mean let's say what is that what is that 50 times more if let's say the value of silver went to a trillion the annual production went to a trillion dollars oh what's a trillion right and it's our desk it's our it's our government deficit right let's say it goes up 10 times from where it is to 200 billion, just a 10x, okay? Just a 10x, that would be what? $200 silver, it'd be a $200 billion market. We've got, we got, I mean, are, do you get where I'm saying here? I don't know, I'm not, I'm not, I don't wanna get, I don't wanna anger you or get anyone mad when I say this, but when I hear us think that, oh, there's no way silver could go up 10 times in value, you're a pumper, Ron, you're a pumper, you're this, you're that. Well, that would be a $200 billion market. That's like a fifth of a trillion, and we've got companies that sell hardware, right, that are, that are worth, you know, 10 times that. I don't know. Just a thought. Just a thought. Okay. Let's talk about the California gold rush. What do you say? Remember the gold rush, the 49ers, 1849? I learned something fascinating last week. There was so much gold in California here in the United States, and I think there's still a lot of gold in California, but nonetheless, that in one year, <clears throat> 1852, this was interesting. More gold was produced in California alone in the year 1852 than the entire world produced during the entire 18th century. There was so much gold that was being found. What else is interesting is that during the first year of the gold rush, 1848, it was mostly American Indians and Peruvians and Chinese because the word hadn't got, Americans didn't believe it well, on the East Coast at first. They thought that it was the government trying to lure people out to the West, okay? So for the first year, it was mostly American Indians, Peruvians, Chinese that were getting all this easy gold that was being found. And then when all the uh, people from the East Coast went out there, it's kind of sad, guys, what happened. They basically 
eradicated. I, I forget the number, but the number of Indians went from, it was very sad, went from like, I don't know, 150,000 down to 15,000 in the matter of just a couple of years. It's not, it's not a pretty story, but it just shows, uh, I guess there is a dark side to gold, right, and silver, but it shows how people are still back then and still today uh, attribute such a huge high value to gold. Now, if you want to get your hands on some gold in the ground, check out our other sponsor. These shows are only possible with your support. Thank you for all the Super Chats, but also our sponsors like First Mining Gold. They've got a bunch of gold in Canada. We could see a new gold rush erupt in Canada. They have two of Canada's largest development stage gold projects. But wait, there's more. But those two projects alone, right, they each have 5 million ounces. Springpole in Ontario and Duparquet in Quebec. They also own a number of other projects. And I think somebody's yelling at me from upstairs. Hold on one second. Yes. On the Weber shades, he'll send you another super chat. <laughs> okay, so apparently Craig Susie told me Craig said if I put on the Weber shades, uh, that he would send me another super chat. All right, I'll put them on. I'm getting ready to wrap up, but I'll do it. Anything for you guys? Sorry, buddy. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Welcome to Ron's basement. Now I really can't see anything. These feel crooked. <laughs> Uh, uh, so it's going to be an interesting week. I am optimistic. I can't see you now, so I'm just, I, I know what it feels like to not have good eyesight. This week is going to be critical for the silver price and the gold price. Why? Why? Because we're at a point where that base, right, that consolidation that's gone on could be, uh, how would I say it, finalized, right? We could, we could find out this week if we are actually going to make the big run, I think this week is going to be pivotal. I think it's going to be absolutely pivotal. I don't want to be sitting here next week, you know, telling you that, oh man, we're trying to fight for 1850 gold. It can happen, right? We are trying to stay above $21 in silver. I don't think that's going to happen. I do believe that we're going to make a run into the end of the year. I do believe that the consolidation, the base has been built very strong. So what I'm hoping is that next Sunday, you and I are sitting here and we're talking about $2,000 gold, right? We'll be fine either way. You know, we've been through, hey, thank, is that, is that that super chat I was promised? All right, Greg, thank you. Okay. But I do think that, I do think that we have a good shot at moving into this record territory before the end of the year, right? We need to check in with Buddy Rumble and see what he says. Don't forget to go uh, to the to the description of this video. Please uh, enter into the giveaway, the Big Black Friday giveaway. And uh, number one, and thank you, guys. You know what? Let's take a second here. Um, uh, 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 I'm, oh, I'm, man, I'm losing it. Hold on. I can't see. Oh, yeah, 400 of you, please. I want to see 400 people type the letter four or the number four. Thanks, Craig. You're awesome, too. And that number four is for the moderators to tell them thank you, okay? Uh, they do a great job, and and we're all grateful. The entire community, Sassy Silver, Jake, Coin Shop Chris, Jim M, Annie, and our newest, Sassy Silver, okay? The guys, they do a wonderful, look at all that. Wow. Thank you. Now that makes me feel good. We got 400 people and you guys all type four. Have a great day. Okay, guys. And I'll see you soon. Thank you.